Hey everyone! Neo CEO aims to use in-house chips to reduce costs, enhance performance, improve margins, and reach profitability by 2025. The CEO of Neo said that last year, we bought a significant amount of chips from Nvidia, which accounted for 46% of their total sales of Orin X chips. This was a substantial financial investment from our side. So, what steps are we taking to reduce these costs? We are planning to introduce our own chip that will deliver the performance of four Orin X chips but at a much lower cost. By leveraging our research and development R&D efforts, we aim to significantly improve our profit margins. We now have a clear path to profitability for NEO, as indicated by the insights shared by NEO CEO in April. NEO has outlined its strategy to achieve profitability and break even. During the earnings call, the CEO shared some important information regarding the future of NEO brands. Starting from next year, NEO plans to gradually transition its product line to the third generation beginning with the introduction of the ET9 model on the NT3.0 platform. This upgrade is a crucial part of their strategy to improve vehicle margins. For the third-generation products, NEO intends to incorporate more in-house technologies, including their own chips, which will enhance vehicle performance and reduce costs. This move is a direct response to the high expenses associated with purchasing NVIDIA or NX chips. To give you an idea of the scale, NEO has been the largest buyer of these chips, acquiring 46% of all Orin X chips produced by NVIDIA. Each NEO vehicle currently uses four Orin X chips, making this a costly component. In comparison, most other automakers use only one Orin X chip per vehicle, if any at all, and at most, they might use two. The decision to use four chips in every NEO vehicle has significantly driven up production costs. However, NEO new in-house chip will be more cost-effective, providing four times the capability of a single Orin X chip. Reflecting on this, one might question why NEO did not previously introduce a vehicle on the NT2.0 platform with fewer chips, perhaps just one Orin X chip. This strategic decision could have alleviated some of the cost pressures. Nevertheless, looking ahead, the NT3.0 products will aim for an average vehicle margin of around 20%. The company is confident in achieving this target through the use of more in-house technologies and cost-saving measures, such as reductions in battery costs. The break-even target for the NEO brand remains the same achieving a monthly sales volume of 30,000 units with a 20% vehicle margin. Meeting these targets will allow NEO core business in China to break even. As for NEO's second brand, Anvo, the pre-sale prices have been announced, and the final prices will be released soon. Even at the pre-sale prices, Anvo is expected to realize a healthy vehicle margin. However, competition in the Anvo segment is more intense than in the NEO segment. Hence, NEO will strive to balance sales volume with vehicle margin, avoiding the temptation to boost sales at the expense of margins. In the long term, Envo aims to achieve a product margin of around 15%, a reasonable target considering Tesla current product margin of 16-17%. For Envo to break even, the brand needs to achieve monthly sales volumes of 20,000 to 30,000 units, Given the appealing products Onvo offers, these targets seem attainable. Meanwhile, NEO current NT2.0 vehicles struggle to reach the desired 20% margin, primarily due to the high cost of the Orin X chips. Why didn't NEO release a variant with fewer chips? This question highlights the cost burden these chips impose. To sum up, the combined break-even target for NEO and Envo brands requires a total monthly delivery volume of about 60,000 units. Currently, NEO is approaching this target with orders nearing 30,000 units, though actual deliveries are still catching up due to bottlenecks in the delivery process. Achieving a 20% margin will likely require the full rollout of NT3.0 products which means profitability might not be realized until next year when these new products hit the market. Even as the ET9 starts deliveries, NT2.0 products will still be sold, 
delaying the full shift to NT 3.0. Ultimately, NEO profitability hinges on the successful introduction of their own chips and other in-house technologies. This shift will improve margins across the board. The goal is to see significant improvements by 2025, with higher average selling prices and strong performance from Envo contributing to this outcome. The path to profitability is clear, but it requires the execution of several critical steps, including the full transition to NT30 and the implementation of NEO's proprietary chips and technologies. Reflecting on the past, the use of four Orin X chips per vehicle, while providing exceptional computing power, was a costly decision. When the ET7 was launched in late 2020, it was a groundbreaking model touted as a competitor to Tesla Model S. The vehicle high price was initially justified by its advanced features, including the powerful chips. However, a price cut of 30,000 RMB per vehicle last June, along with the removal of free battery swaps, negatively impacted margins. Producing such advanced vehicles at lower selling prices has made profitability challenging. NEO is unlikely to be profitable in 2024. The focus is now on transitioning to NT 3.0 products and utilizing their own chips to reduce costs. This strategic pivot away from relying on NVIDIA expensive Orin X chips will be crucial. NVIDIA has benefited significantly from NEO purchases, but the future lies in NEO own technological advancements. The plan is set shift to NT 3.0, deploy in house chips, and improve margins. These steps will position NEO for profitability by 2025, provided all conditions are met and the strategic execution is flawless. Thank you for joining us today. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more stock predictions and market insights. Remember to turn on the notification bell so you never miss an update. Happy investing, and see you in the next video.